this is a mall that I have gone to for years to pick merchandise to take to my mall spaces and to take to shows. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hello everybody, I'm George the Antique Nomad, and you can see a busy street in front of me with a sign saying Burlington, a coat factory, and Antique Pavilion. And that is where I am. I'm in front of Aurora Antique Pavilion in Edmonds, Washington. This is a mall that I have gone to for years to pick merchandise to take to my mall spaces and to take to shows. Some days they have amazing things and tons of them. Some days they don't have much at all. It just depends. I've noticed a lot of dealers move in here stay for a few months, sell off an estate, then have a big discount sale. So we're gonna look for bargains and see if there's anything we can flip for a profit elsewhere. One thing to know about this place is it's big. And right away we have a 40% off sale. So let's take a look at this odd thing here. This looks like a sugar bowl. It's supposed to be a bird, see the beak. And that's going to be 1320 after the discount. That's just strange enough to be interesting. Oh, but look, it was $12 somewhere else. Mm. Take those tags off, folks. I was probably going to buy that, and now I'm kind of turned off. 68 on the Italian peasant with the gold. 1970s version of the Vancouver Whitecaps pennant from the old NASL days. This is one of Seattle's two big rivals. This is rivalry week in soccer right now, actually. This one's only $8. I have a feeling that would sell online for more. This dealer has had a lot of fun modern stuff in their spaces over the ages. Franz Porcelain Vase. Now this is a relatively new company, but they have been producing for some time now. And there are collectors, there's a lot of discontinued. These are not inexpensive pieces new, so that is a name to look for. Little Blendo glass, well not really little, but rather large glowing green. Not glowing like a black light glow, but just a pretty bright color of happy lime green. This looks like California Originals. I get a kick out of these. There's these enamel broiler, enamel boilers for clams that say clam broth, and you would boil the clams here, and then the juice would come down here, and you could actually pour it out of a spigot. This one's pretty decorated. They're usually plainer than this. This is $80, and that's a typical price for these. 1960 era. These folks have been here a long time. These are friends of mine. Jim and Kay Whitaker with Pro Estate Services and they sell a lot of their overruns here. They actually deal primarily in vintage Christmas and some really cool things. I think we're going to see them at the Portland Antique Show this weekend so I'll be happy to show you their space there. Now there's a neat cuff down in this space. It's copper, and it looks like Renoir, but it's small. It's only $8, though, so let's see if this might fit anybody. It's got the Renoir signature. There's the Rome City Antique Show advertising that we have been setting out everywhere. We're expecting a great crowd. Okay, so this is a little tight. It's definitely on the smallish side, but it's priced accordingly, so I think I might take a chance on it anyway. A piece of Fostoria's coin pattern in the blue color. I like that happy Capri blue. And isn't she lovely? This is something that was probably made at home out of a mold back in the 50s. You can tell by the hairstyle, but she's quite lovely. She's priced at 95. She's in wonderful condition and that matters a lot. In this space we have a really neat hanging bird cage. This has got a nice design that's Art Deco right here. It was made in England. It's priced at 135 but the fact that it has the hanging hoop and it's a nice painted color means that that is about what it should sell for. Now this place has been here a long time and this piece has been here a long time. Faded tags are a clue that something has sat too long and the reason of course is that the top of this is cracked. It's too bad because it's a very pretty bower ring cookie jar that would be worth about $100 otherwise. Only $12.95 on this Carnival Chalkware ship here. That's in good condition. Well, these folks have always had vintage fashion and hats, and they have a lot of hats in right now. And this really neat red coat. 
with the faux fur sleeves. That one is priced at $175. It is the Galson original. This would have been sold at Nordstrom back when Nordstrom was only a Seattle department store. It started as a shoe store and eventually added other lines. And then in the 19, early 90s, really expanded across the country. These little Fenton Novelty pieces are priced as little as $8, which is really a good deal with the Blue Crest. This one with the unusually shaped base is going to be from about 1940 when they did that textured bottom. And at $8, that one's big enough. I, I may just have to pick that one up. This blue satin glass covered compote has the imperial glass mark on the inside. See the I and the G there? That's going to date to the 1960s. Now that one's priced at 45, as is the Viking blue pedestal dish. So the prices are kind of all over the place on this stuff. But there are a few bargains in here. These were advertising pieces done for various drug stores and drug makers. This one's Shearing Plow. These were done in the 1960s and 70s. These mortar and pestles, $16 on that one. They all seem to be priced about that. Here's the 28th edition. So see, they did these annually for a long time. Some as recently as the 1990s and they were done for conventions of pharmacists and such. And because of that, if you find someone with a big collection, they may have a really big collection. Here's a bunch of metal ones. And they must have had someone who was a pharmacy collector because there's these interesting pharmacy tumblers. $48 for the set, that's $6 each, that doesn't seem bad at all. These are going to be right around 1970 and they have all sorts of interesting, the mortar and pestle and books, herbs that were turned into various drugs and natural remedies, the scale, that's a fun set. And then we have Dogs R Us. The set of two poodles with the spaghetti is only $12. That seems like a very good deal. They're cute and they're 1960s. The Beswick Boxer is priced like Beswick usually is at $65. And then this Terrier is by Lama Nazov. So when you get into some of the better quality companies, you certainly see the prices reflect that. This says it's a glass bird dish. Let's take it out and see if it has any age at all. It has hardly ever been used, and I think this piece is pretty new. It's aping a style that was done by Chalet Glass in Canada, and that's why I was curious about it. But it is not the original. Now, this place does turn into kind of a jumble. One of the reasons I consider it a Pickers Mall is because there's a lot of spaces that you really have to kind of wade through to get to stuff, and there is service and help here, but you kind of have to go get it. It's not just readily available on the floor. The tall Viking glass deck is $95. Notice the difference in price between that and the Italian one in blue and green for $65. We're going to head down the hall here, and while we do, I just would like to thank you for watching this, and please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't, because then you can click the bell, actually, to be notified of future videos. This is Denby Pottery, and this pink, I just sold a whole set of this for $300. The Gypsy Pink is popular. It was made in England about 1970. There's the Denby name. Denby patterns are something to look for. It is one line of dinnerware that does seem to still sell reasonably well. This back corner is 25% off, and I have to say, there's always a jumble of stuff in the back corner, and sometimes it's pretty interesting. The Parker Pen Case is priced down to $300 now instead of $395. The Aloha Hawaiian tray was $29, and now it's going to be about $22. I have to say, I'm tempted to get that. I think my customer in Portland might like that. It looks like it's got some decent age. There's the Treasure Craft couple there for 40 with the 25 percent discount i might be getting that too so i think i'm going to have to get some help to look in this case out west we see a lot of northern pacific railway stuff because seattle was their terminus here along with the great northern and this is old school seattle totems versus vancouver connects back when both were in the western hockey league vancouver became an nhl team in 1970 and the totems were supposed to follow, but the NHL reneged on it. And we only now, just this season, got a hockey team for the first time in Seattle. 
first time since the 1920s we actually had a team here in the 20s that won the Stanley Cup. Look at that great Art Deco mirror behind these very cute shake machines. We've got a Hamilton Beach number 18 in black, which is hard to find, priced at 300 minus the discount, so about 225 about 120 on these other two, the Gilcrest and the Hamilton Beach, but behind it is what I'm trying to show you. See this great mirror, wonderful Art Deco detail. Blue mirror is definitely very popular. This is priced at 145 minus 25%. It's such an unusual shape. If it was just a little less money, I'd be tempted to get it. And they do get some unusual things here. They have a nice old transit here. The Craftsman Surveying Tool, which is with the discount about 150 An interesting Japanese scale in cast iron, priced also at about 150 160 with the discount. You can see the Japanese writing on the top there. This is going to date to about 1900 And then this, the Sudbury Soil Testing Kit. This is to help you figure out how to fertilize your land for crops. This is going to be about 1940 and it is priced at about 100 with the discount. Nice to see a genuine old piece of neon. This is priced about 250. This is the old Pepsi Cola label before 1973. Very handsome oak side by side here. Solid oak, not veneer. So this one's a really well-made piece, and boy, with the discount, they're down to about $300. Because the discount is off the last marked price. That's really quite a bargain for that piece of furniture. Here we are, where the West begins. Or in this case, where it kind of ends, because we're really close to the Pacific Ocean. Here's an unusual Cambridge glass piece from the 1930s. It's the Nude Bowl, and this one's priced at 300 That may be an old school price, but you see these so seldomly that I don't imagine that it would go for a whole lot less these days. Great purple color. Some fun vintage toys in here. This one with the two guys who are using the railroad hand car is priced at about 95 That's Japanese from the 50s with its original box. Some modernism that looks like it's come over from England. I like this piece, $7.79. This could be good for display in a mid-century home. This one's priced at $4.90, uh, sorry, $4.49. And this should open up to be a desk front. This looks like G-Plan furniture from England. It does tend to be a little less expensive than the Danish modern, but it is neat looking and it has the right feel for the era. I am finding some treasure craft here today. Here is the fish platter for 32. That's the right price for that piece. Now, originally there was a small fish that sat in the middle as a chip, uh, the dip part for the chip and dip, but it didn't look like this. This one is just a tourist piece from Hawaii. Oh, it's the same shame that it's got that chip though. This is Royal Hager, the red vase here. Interesting shape from the 70s. $36 seems like a decent price on that. And then this is screen painting by Melville with the tugs at the docks. This is a very Northwest look from the 1970s. Elton Bennett was doing this sort of thing as screen prints and original paintings as well. This one's priced at 75. I have a pair of these that are smaller, priced about the same. This is not a treasure craft piece, but it's an interesting way to depict diamond head. And it's got that sort of variegated glaze. This is Hana Isle. This is a company that did treasure craft looking items out on the island of Maui. They are serious about having a lot of imports from England. A lot of imported furniture, even in this back area here, which seems open. I'm not sure I'm supposed to go in here, but there's nothing saying I can't. And I see price tags on a lot of stuff. So we'll just take a quick gander here and see if there's anything in the pile we need to dig for. I like the old hall tree there. It's a little tiny porthole mirror. Yeah, when we see washstand pitchers and bowls, this is how they were originally meant to be presented. There would have been a specific stand made for them. The commode or chamber pot might have sat underneath if it had a lid since there isn't a door to put it behind. And here's your washstand and pitcher in a recessed spot here so that the bowl doesn't move around on you when you're using it because you would pour the water into the bowl and wash your face and such things. Priced at $3.39 for this whole set. This one says that it's Georgian, but Georgian period goes way back to 
before Queen Victoria, and these pieces look more Victorian to me, particularly the fact that there's a lot of uniformity in the carving. So we know this was machined and Georgian furniture that is really Georgian came from before machines were used in furniture. This is a Fenton jade green piece from the 1920s. People don't often recognize that as Fenton, but they did jadeite in fact before really most of the other companies made any effort at it. And there are showcases full of merchandise in this mall. There's really way more than I'll be able to show you in this short period of time, but I'm gonna do my best to give you a feel. And I see a bunch of things I wanna come back and buy. There's a Lincoln promotional car from the 1960s. It's a 66 Lincoln. It's missing its hood ornament, so the $80 with that condition and the scratches is a little bit of a push. I'm hoping to get a large collection of these. 1994 Macintosh Performa. And you can get the Mac OS 8.1 with 40 megabytes of RAM. Wow, imagine all that. But people are collecting these older computer sets and it does have everything. It's priced at $750, so they must think there's a customer for it. Here's a cute Mickey Mouse pop-up book from 1933. And that's just wonderful. The condition is really good from what we can see. It's priced at $90. That would be a hard pop-up to get. Here's something different from England. This is a pigeon racing clock in an oak case. Body and Ridewood, the world's largest mail order supplier of pigeon racing equipment. Can't say I've ever seen one of those before. It's for sale at $195. Frederick and Nelson was our high-end department store in Seattle for many, many years. They made it a little over a hundred years and went out in the early 90s. They even had an antique store and a coin shop as part of their department store. Here's some of the old banners, a Lennox mayonnaise and whipped cream bowl with the plate. That would have been used in their high-end cafe upstairs. These would have been in the more general cafe because they're not as fine china, but it's neat to see this old Frederick and Nelson stuff. They're the ones who invented Frango chocolates. Stuff related to old Frederick and Nelson, the charge cards, the employee tags, this is definitely collectible stuff now. A whole bunch of Nintendo 64 games, but these are Japanese, so they're a little more interesting. They're eight to $12 each. And more video games, $3, $5, $10, Again, all from Japan. So if you have it mastered in English, well, maybe doing it in Japanese will give you a new challenge. Vintage clothing, we all know the old concert shirts are going for money. Here's ACDC for 65. Bloomsday, that's the run in Spokane. New Mexico, most of these are not anything particularly interesting, but the first one being a concert shirt definitely gets your attention. This is one of the nicer interiors I've seen on one of these steamer trunks. This is in wonderful condition, and that's why it's priced at $350. It's even got one of the original bag stickers from Redline Transfer Company, and information on how to open and close the trunk. But look at the neat detail in all the drawers. These are very handy for people who have a small space because you have this area for all of your clothing that hangs and then all of your drawers here. I know someone who's a musician and she actually takes one of these traveling with her and that's where she keeps all her stuff for her stage performances. And she actually bought it from me. Here's some dolls we don't see so often. We've got the Sunshine Family. Grandpa looks like a hippie to me and it looks like he's having trouble keeping his shirt and pants on. And then we get into a bunch of Ken and Alan dolls. I always was suspicious of those too. Donny Osmond, a 1984 Michael Jackson doll. These are all priced relatively inexpensively. $20 is an average price. There's a Farrah doll. This is cool, a Philco Predicta. We don't see these too often. And this one is priced at $8.50. They were absolutely futuristic with the CRT standing on top of the base. Underneath is a really cool turntable, Electra Home. This is one of these ones with the bubble top from the 1970s. And it's got the two round speakers as well. These are very collectible now. I imagine it's a few hundred dollars, but I cannot see the price tag. It looks like it's been removed. You can't really see it, but this is the Cudahy Bar S, which was a local brand. 
advertising America's Space Age World's Fair, and they are the exclusive meet of the Century 21 exposition. You can tell they took a photo of the scale model because the Space Needle doesn't really look like that. A picture of the plastic model that they had before the fair opened. I love Square Dishes and Winfield of Pasadena, California. Made some really cool ones. This has the old Winfield China mark on it. $20 a piece on the tumblers. These have been collectible for a long time and they've got some nice pieces. They've got $28 on the coffee carafe and $35 on the coffee pot. They also have some Franciscan Oasis, which to me is a great alternative to Franciscan Starburst because it's got really fun designs and costs oh, about half as much as Starburst pieces do. Some more Winfield, there's the plate. We see these little deco glass sets quite a lot from the 1930s, right after Prohibition ended, a lot of people bought these. And yes, that is a Blanco picture. You can see that very strong division between the orange and the yellow in their tangerine color. I know it looks sort of green in this light, but I think if we take it out, it's gonna look more true to color. There we go. This is 1958 to 61 because it has the acid signature you can almost make out all the letters. That's why they didn't use that signature very long. It didn't really adhere to their glass well. And then there's something really cool here. They say killer rare, and I think they're at least scarce, but this is neat. Lucite seashell table lighter and ashtray set, $75. I have to say, I would probably price it like that too. That is really cool. I like these patriotic 4th of July cards from the golden era of postcards around 1910. And then we have above the Royal Mint stir Sirloin Plate. That's kind of fun, $15 set for Murray's Bread Service. Wow. And we have a genius at work at the barbecue stand. Now here is 1930s jade eye glass. This is McKee in the Laurel pattern, $75 for the pair. You notice it's a little more minty green than the Fire King from the 50s, and definitely more of a mint color compared to the Fenton from the 20s. More English wardrobes. I like the one in the middle with the lighter wood and the velvet panel in the center. That's rather striking. Nurse Flipper just did a big video about teapots and this dealer has a whole lot. These are Hall China and look at the huge variety they made. They were the most preeminent teapot maker of the American companies. And there's some really interesting ones. The foreman here is the one with the twin spout. I like the airflow design. And then there's the donut. This is a classic. The donuts are rather expensive and they have been for years. It's such a great Art Deco design. We've got this neat little one here. The safe spout, where the spout actually doesn't stick out so it doesn't chip, which is a problem. You need to look at the spouts on teapots before you buy. There's one that they made for Dripolator in the back there. It's got an orange flower design on it. The Nautilus is another very famous Hall China Deco pattern. These were made for McCormick to sell with their tea. They also made for Lipton's. This one here with the laurel wreath is the Los Angeles pattern. We don't see that one too often. And then there's tea for two. I always thought this was a neat idea so people could have their own flavor of tea. And the spouts are different so you can tell whose is whose. This one's a really hard one to find. This one has the football shape, and that's rather unusual as well. And of course, Aladdin is a classic. So, Hall teapots are definitely a cool thing to collect. There's even this one that's shaped like a car. One thing that's been a specialty for a long time here is imported English and continental furniture, primarily English pieces, however. They have a regular business of importing it from England, and they've been doing it for, gosh, at least 20-some years, and they have some interesting forms here. This one's priced at $4.59 with the nicely carved door panels. This corner piece is interesting with the little mirror. That one's priced at $3.45. It's going to date to right around $18.90. It's got a nice little cabinet space and the mirrors were so that you could feature one nice item that you could see all the way around. 
A lot of people like English furniture because it typically is not heavy and difficult to move like this bar here. That's because they didn't use a frame to build it around. The pieces are actually attached to each other, so there's not some big heavy inner frame. Now it meant that the pieces were maybe not as rugged as American pieces of the same type. Then again, you have this Victorian cast iron base table at 289, which seems like a great price. And that one is plenty rugged. These are nice though. English furniture is typically scaled for English homes and a lot of people live in apartments and small spaces there. So these pieces tend to be at a scale that is nice for Americans who live in condominiums and smaller homes. And here we see a line of wardrobes. It's funny, I was just talking to a friend of mine who moved into a manufactured home and she said the one thing it doesn't have is a lot of closets. English wardrobes are not that expensive now, and please don't call them armoire if they're English. They are not French and they are not armoire. They are wardrobes like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. These are priced at about 350 to 400 each, and they disassemble into panels, so they're very easy to move. And then this is a very pretty painted trunk. This will date to sometime in the early 1800s, possibly even late 1700s. It's got some old wormwood damage that you see. I'm sure it's been fumigated since it came here. Wonderful old paint. That's just a really neat piece. Let's see if we can give you a bigger view of it. There we go, now you can see the whole thing in one photo. This mall is interesting in its layout because there's lots of intersecting aisles and things at angles. And it means you get a lot of display space. I understand that part like this very well put together and very attractive display. You don't use a lot of aisle space, so you actually get to utilize the space you're paying for in an efficient way, and in this case, create a very nice vignette. So when it works, it's a great design. I am a sucker for this pickled bamboo, like these shelves here, that date to about 1890, 1900. I buy them anytime I can find them at a decent price. They typically sell for 150 to 200 dollars retail. Nice old copy of Hans Brinker, The Silver Skates, for $25. This bamboo etagere, because it's a corner piece, is a little more expensive at $225. Look at these beautiful early 1900s full feather shades. This one's by Kazal. It's signed on the rim. The green is unusual. That's why it's $475. The basic gold ones typically sell for $250 to $350. And yes, I have sold them for those prices. Those are not make-believe prices. They're just beautiful. $59 is a pretty good deal for this NH Hill pole toy from about 1930. It's in okay condition. And here's a wonderful shelf full of 1920s and 30s solid color Rookwood pottery. Now this is, these prices are before a 20% off sale that they're having now. The dancing women in the stars in the back, men and women actually, Priced at $4.25 before the discount, so about $3.25 now. I've seen those asked prices as high as $1,100. Rookwood is such nice quality, and the glazes are really very well done. Cincinnati's contribution to the pottery world. Not their only contribution, but maybe the most famous. This is Marblehead Pottery. That is a great name to look for. I've owned exactly one piece in my career. It's priced at $3.95, less 20%. Then there's North Dakota School of Mines. This is related to ultimately the Rose Lane Pottery and other Dakota potteries as well. That's a very pretty dual glazed, dual color piece. Priced at about three and a quarter. And then this is SEG, the Saturday Evening Girls. These are all names to look for in pottery that you just don't see very often that really are costly. And then a pretty piece of Moorcroft behind them. This French faux jewel lamp is really cool. I always like the faux jeweling, which is basically glass in the shades that would light up when you lit the lamp. This has a very nice Art Nouveau base. They are asking after the discount $5.75 for that piece. There's one of the original Van Brickle shades that belongs to the lovely maiden lamp here. And with the discount, it's been rewired and the shade has a few crumples. It's not in perfect shape, but it is $150 with the discount. I also think these are pretty good prices on these mesh bags with the discount. 
you're looking in the $60 range for the one in the middle, which looks like a Whiting and Davis. So does the one on the right, which would be about 70 very viable prices. Usually we see Christmas trees, but here is a butterfly made out of old costume jewelry. Isn't that fun? Every so often I'll see a really good piece of costume jewelry that someone massacred to put in one of these things, and then I say, ooh, shoot. But for the most part, they were using junk jewelry, and it's just a lot of fun. Let's see if we can find a price on this. This one is priced at 95 minus the discount. That has just enough kitsch factor that, again, not a bad price for what it is. And more Winfield China, we see this mainly on the West Coast, and this is the Desert Dawn pattern. Egyptological 1920s picture seems like a great deal for only $24.50. Yes, this is a good place to pick, and I am going to definitely come back. There's several things I'd like to buy. Many happy faces. The McCoy are old. This is not. Notice the difference different shape to the smile and everything. McCoy did do them in brown as well briefly. Look at Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head in their original box. You'll enjoy them as they scoot along in their cars with boat and shopping trailers. She needs an entire trailer for her shopping. Wish she'd come to my shop. This is priced at $40. It's the old kitty Pepsi dispenser from the early 1970s. You can see they have the 1973 logo in it. Price at $40. Looks like it was never used. Death in Cellophane. This is a 1937 attempt to get people to stop smoking. It was known long before the Surgeon General's warning that cigarettes were not really very good for you. There's a really cool bomber dexterity puzzle for only $12 next to it from World War II. That's another thing. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to come back and make a bunch of purchases because I'm going to run out of time. I want to show you folks what I can. And then I'm going to go back and shop. Paul's Blossom Flight here, you see. The tea set, along with the cornucopia and the basket. The prices are really down on this stuff. Only 15 for the cornucopia, 100 for the tea set, and 20 for the little basket. But it's a lot of design and really kind of fun in a very 50s way. And yes, they do have records and CDs. This is not a Curtis Jure, but it is a neat mountain and tree wall sculpture for $80. That is a real statement piece and very Northwestern. Well, I could do a lot more shopping here and I will come back and do, but I am grabbing the three pieces I think I have somebody interested in who's coming to the show. This is the last one. It's a 1909 Seattle World's Fair play from the first World's Fair. Well, Aurora Antique Pavilion has been a fun and profitable place to pick as usual. I wish I had more time. There's definitely more that I could buy, but I am on a deadline to pick up things from other clients to take to the Portland Antique Show. So I'm going to go for now, but I'm going to come back here and show you more at some future date. I'm glad you could come along with me. I'm George the Antique Nomad. Check me out at the social media links in the description, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!